Hello, you're watching PlayStation Access. My name's Dave, and I'm joined today by our very special friend, Ben. Ben Wilson, who uh, is a friend of mine who I've known for several years, a friend of the show, Ben. In fact, you kind of were, were there at the beginning of PlayStation Access. I was there at the beginning, and I'm very privileged to be called your special friend, so I'm not <laughs> sure if I should ask if that's a good or a did bad thing. Did I say thing. special? Oh, you God. did say special. In the nicest possible way. In the, uh, not in the in-betweeners sense of special. <laughs> uh, not only uh, are we uh, friends, Ben, but I, you, you are probably uh, the biggest sports fan I know, and the biggest American sports fan I know, who, who including all the Americans I know. I am a bit of a sports maniac. Um, I did before I had children and children got in the way. I did used to routinely go out to America to watch baseball and American football and as such uh, absolutely love um, baseball games, American football games, basketball games, hockey games, all, all the games really, all the sports games. Which is why you're really qualified to tell us five reasons that MLB The Show 18 is uh, the best sports game that um, I've never played. And I guess a lot of people out there won't have played. and. Uh, I suppose the, the kind of overall point with the, to make here is that there are a lot of people who enjoy sports games, myself in, included, who don't necessarily enjoy the sports that they're about, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis. Like football, I love pairs, but I don't play football and I don't really follow football. Um, and it can be the the same kind of thing for MLB The Show. So what is it you want to tell us about? Yes, I mean, I would, I'd liken it to um, the early 90s when I got into Madden and, and I wasn't an NFL fan then, but I started playing Madden and Madden got me hooked on that sport. And I think it's probably the same over here. I think um, UK sports fans probably know baseball as uh, American rounders. And while that, that, that's not an inaccurate description, there are many more nuances to the sport. And I think by playing MLB The Show, which for the last two or three years has been released in the UK as well as the States, I yeah. think it is a really good grounding in baseball, in the MLB, and um, for me it's led to an obsession with the Boston Red Sox. As I said, I used to go out there for my children two or three times a year to watch them. Uh, and yeah, I, I, so I think if you're of that ilk of you've, as you described, you've played a sport and it's you've played a sports game and it's got you into real sport, I think you will find a lot of love here. I mean, for me, the, the key thing this game does is um, you play it with a very simple control system. Of course, there are more... Um, there's more depth to the control system as you get to play it, but the initial basics are really, really simple, yet at the same time you constantly get this feeling that you are in control of elite professionals, whether it's whacking a home run 450 yards into the stands at Fenway Park, whether it's sort of um, you know performing a 9 or 10 uh, strikeout uh, game, uh, all, all those kind of elements that in a lot of other games. With FIFA, for instance, you have to use your skill sticks to be like Ronaldo. Yeah. In this game, you've got four buttons to press um, and uh, you still get that same feeling without the level of having to spend six months learning every, uh, learning every nuance of the control system to know what you're doing. Yeah, that's. Uh, I guess that really is the sort of that is the mark of a brilliant sports game. Yeah, it, it, it borrows really well from past games. So, for instance, you know, you must have played in the past the uh, Tiger Woods EA golf games. You know, I think everyone's played them, even if you're not into golf. And for instance, if you want to pick up and play the pitching on MLB The Show. All you need to do is think back to your your training, as it were, in the golf games of yesteryear. So you can choose the meter system, which is basically you hold down the button. Like you know, you, you must remember uh, taking a shot in PGA Tour golf. You initially hold down the button. You let the meter build up. Then when you're happy with the power, you let go of the meter, and then you have to stop it again when it gets back to the initial starting point. Um, so there's all these things where, uh, even if you've never played a baseball game before, and it also ties in nicely to baseball games of the past, which we'll get to later, but even if you've never played a baseball before, there will be elements of other sports games you've played that will give you a good learning in this before you've even picked it up. Yeah, I've actually had sort of like a very quick 20 minutes with MLB The Show this morning before we had this conversation, and I was really kind of like surprised and impressed that it gives you loads of different control options. So, so you can pick the one that you recognize it lets you try them out um before you you know before you get going with the game it's like would you like to pitch like this or there's one that's sort of like a, a retracting circle yeah. that you have to hit at the right time um i can't remember there's like a, an analog completely analog that's version right. and it's the same with batting and fielding like there are there are several different control schemes that you get to choose the one that feels the most familiar or um just the, the best for you yeah, and the great thing with it, so the, the way that it then bridges from the basics into the slightly more advanced stuff is, for example, with the batting, like you say, you can choose from many different options how you want to do it. You can just, like, literally, just, if you want to, you can just press X at the right time, and if you get the timing right of when the pitch arrives, you know, you'll knock it uh, for a home run or close to. You first learn your batting system, and you get taken into these other slightly more... Um, advanced systems that are still actually really easy to get your head around when you've played the game for even like 45 minutes. Now obviously like um, if you are a, a baseball fan 
one of the things that's going to be really important to you is just how, how true I guess it is to real you know baseball is it, is it have we got all the franchises included yeah all the franchises you've got their double A and triple A teams you know what a double A team is no so that's like in, it, so uh, uh, baseball has a slightly different structure so you'd be used to from English sports so you, you imagine over here if um, Manchester United are in the Premiership yeah. you imagine if their Manchester United B were in the Championship Manchester right. United C were in League One, etc. It's basically that's the setup you have in America, where these independent teams play in essentially Division One and Two, but they have an affiliation to a major league team. Right. So, for example, um, if you play as the Boston Red Sox in franchise mode, you also have control of the Paul Tuckett Red Sox, which are the the, the, the Triple A team, the next tier down. Um, so, yeah, you've got all those teams in there, and just the level of detail within those franchises is, is insane. So, for instance, I'm playing career mode or franchise mode as it's called in uh, MLB the show as the Washington Nationals and basically when you start a game as the Washington Nationals this is this is incredible uh, you get to choose between t- 12 different kits wow um, so, so you've got home road batting practice and you've even got the Montreal Expos 1981 jerseys if you want to take that franchise back to the one it was before it moved to Washington so that's the level of te- depth you've got on show just in things like the kits etc and that then like also um maintains itself once you get into games so you'll see vendors walking up and down the aisles selling you know uh, things you buy in a baseball stadium you know food and drink etc you get specific mascots for each team when you uh, when you're in the stadiums doing things between each uh, each inning you even get like overlays of so uh, you know you'll finish I, I played a game last night in Cincinnati and you, you you finish an inning and then you cut away outside the stadium to real time or not real time real life footage of um, you know the, the, the city the the hub of the, the hubbub of the city happening to try and give you that sense that you're playing not in a video but in real life and, and you know the, the the levels it goes to to get to try and give you that feeling of you being either in the ballpark or watching a a, bo- a broadcast on MLB Network it, it is incredible and as I say I think um, unsurpassed in in the genre. It's like the real thing. Uh, and, and for instance, you know, if you hit a home run, um, you will get a thing pop up on the screen with what they call show track technology, where it shows the trajectory of the ball with a little, you know, coloured line. Uh, it, will, it will give you the, the ball's exit velocity and the ball's launch angle. And it's got all these little devices, these little presentational devices that um, I, I love FIFA and I love Madden, but MLB just goes above and beyond in terms of like you wouldn't find many developers who would go let's make it so that if the if a, if someone plays this for four hours one match for four hours yeah. or three hours yeah um let's make it so they get every single detail they get from a real game at, at, at the, the other end of the spectrum you can fast forward to the most critical element of an at bat so you could go up and there could already be like two strikes and one ball and you know the scenario when you get there rather than having to play every single pitch so right, again yeah. everything is tailor made to, uh, to, to to the user to what you want it to be and like I say it would only take an hour or two for you to get to grips with it to realise how you like playing MLB the show and to continue down that path for as long as you are addicted to the game so I'm assuming it's uh, you know a very popular sports game that MLB the show has some sort of career mode Yes, it does. Uh, it's been a, a very popular element of the series. Again, going back to the PS2 years, uh, and it's just simply called franchise mode. There's no, for this one, no over egging the pudding, as it were. Uh, and yeah, basically in this mode, you can control. We talked about the uh, AA and AAA versions of each team. You can control an organisation uh, to a degree that again you choose, and, and you don't. You, you don't just have to control your organisation. You can actually contr- essentially control all the organisations in the MLB. And what that means is that when you play career mode in FIFA, if a big transfer happens in real life, you wouldn't be able to force that through in the game. In MLB The Show, you can actually have an option where, although the game is playing out in the game world, you can do what is called forcing trades. And so you can go in and edit the computerised teams whenever you like, make trades happen that, if you if you so wish, keep things up to date in real world terms as well. Um, so yeah, but the, the, the crux of it is your most people will play as one team uh, you go through you play all 162 games in a season if you want to in the traditional manner uh, that we spoke about earlier with broadcast stylings one of the new good things they've added this year is that you can actually vary up how you play that um, uh, franchise mode so 
you can play the games in the traditional sense, but you can also play it as a as a strategy sim. So you could go in and just manage the manage your lineup, manage when your pictures come in. So towards the end of a baseball game, your main pitcher will get tired, so you'll look to the bullpen. The bullpen is where the uh, where your relievers, as they're called, right. will warm up their arms, ready to come ready to come into the game. You can choose if you like to, to as I say, to take things from a strategic point of view, just warm up pitchers, bring them in at the right time, um, or you can actually go in and play retro mode. And I know from talking to you before this broadcast, Dave, that you're a big fan of retro mode. And we're going to talk about it later, but basically, you can distill things down to a far more simplified version of baseball, even more simple simple than the one we mentioned earlier, where it's basically one button to pitch one button to bat uh, everything is like feels like playing something from the early 2000s um, and you can do this for each game in the 162 game season you can do it as you see fit you can mix and match so yeah there's like loads of depth to it um, and uh, all the things you would expect from a franchise mode so player trades uh, so you know um, your end of season playoff tournaments etc the draft again the draft is a very exciting element to everyone this all where you're bringing new players into your franchise you can even start off with a fantasy draft where basically all the teams get mixed up and you start afresh so you've got the same 30 MLB teams but the Boston Red Sox can have Aaron Judge who is the cover star and plays for the enemy New York Yankees so uh, again, all of this is it's actually quite hard to encompass in like a two minute um, speech because like there's so much to it. Um, but the, the the key thing I would say again is it's presented in such a way that when you pick it up and play, you're not overwhelmed. Um, you are taken through things bit by bit. Um, and even for, uh, for, for a casual player like yourself or I guess an expert, if I don't sound like an idiot calling myself <laughs> that like me. You're definitely um, an expert. You can still have that same level of fun just by spending half an hour getting to grips with it in, in the first place. Yeah, I, I had a very quick browse of this as well before talking to you this morning. And, um, you know, the first thing I think it asks you when you start a new franchi franchise is, do you want to control this aspect of the game or do you want us to do it automatically? And, you know, and, and it shows you the complexity of those things. And um, like you say, you can play every game or there's a button that's literally like sim to draft. Yeah. You know, if you're just one of those players who's just interested in that proper kind of simulation and this sort of statistical and, and well, the draft, then um, you can do that. And I think it's something that it, it balances like incredibly well. Um, that it has that amazing depth but if you just want to play some baseball and you know just in a very kind of casual way you can do that or if you want this to become your second life and you you know you want to achieve your dream of uh, leading a franchise to you know the World Series or whatever um, you can you can do that too it's it's pretty amazing yeah okay so we've talked about career mode is there a, a sort of a, a FIFA ultimate team style mode in in uh, MLB the show 18 as well yeah there is there is a fancy mode uh, and probably in the most simple terms um, it is a bit like ultimate team so you collect cards of players past and present to build into your dream squad and then you play matches with that squad um, there are some additional wrinkles to it so for instance you can create your own kits in ultimate team you have to choose the kit of a real-life team in dynasty Diamond Dynasty, as it's called, or Dynasty. as we would call it, Diamond Dynasty. Yeah. Um, you actually get to create your own kit. You get to create, create your own logo. Logo. So there is more user customization to it than there would be an Ultimate Team. Um, and I'd say with Diamond Dynasty, the whole idea is that there is. Uh, an aspect of time uh, you know you might call it grinding grinding is an unkind way of putting it but where you it will take you three four five months to unlock the best cards right so for instance um you know two of the biggest baseball legends in the world uh, babe ruth and ted williams um you can unlock their cards but it will take you time um to um complete the missions the necessary missions right to build up to this and it, it's actually a bit in this sense it's a bit more like say a destiny than it is a fifa so like you will go in you'll play matches you'll earn stubs stubs is the in-game currency these stubs you'll buy cards and say when you buy when you've bought like 25 baltimore orioles cards you can then submit that as a group and get rewards for that and you're building towards your babe ruth card at the end of it then say you buy like the 25 boston red sox cards and then you submit those and and complete complete that mission um when you get uh so you, you've completed two teams then when you complete all like 30 mlb teams that completes another overarching mission and again you're further on towards getting your big card but the idea behind this mode is that um the all-star break happens in the summer so the game comes out in march the all-star break is in in the end of june and um the developers sony san diego always talk about that they want players to be completing missions completing these challenges at the end of june and july and getting cards then rather than having instantly and of course some will see that as a a, a sense of hang on i want to be able to join you know start, start this mode have the best cards now 
it, it's actually more rewarding doing it this way. Yeah. Um, as you can imagine, you, you have to commit time to it. You have to commit some thought to the transfer market, not just a, a bidding system. You have to put some, um, so spend some time researching player costs and player prices, etc. But yeah, like the um, the the point I'm trying to make is that over the long haul, it means that when you do end up playing with like a Ted Williams in your team. Uh, you are one of the few in the world getting to do that and you know you spent the time doing it. I like that. That's obviously like it's a real mark of respect when you come up against someone like that. Like you know that someone's gone through it and it sounds like this mode is really based on like real world baseball card trading you know like absolutely like it's yeah. about collecting the cards yeah. you, and then you might you might try you know trade a whole team for like a really good card and yeah. so like you're saying about doing missions it's really true to just actually like something that people do in the real world with with actual baseball cards yeah not just players too you can this year they've added in you can get memorabilia so you can get like you can collect team hats and um uh you can collect team jerseys and things and, and like because th this is the this is the, where they're so clever with it is because i'm still it, at the outset of collecting these hats and jerseys and things even I don't know yet exactly what you're going to unlock when I collect enough of them to submit to a challenge and get my rewards it is well worth putting in the time to get your head around the mode um, because you will be receiving the fruits of those labours in August, September, October um, when you've been playing the game non-stop or close to non-stop for six months Okay, so from something that's quite complex then to something that's maybe much more simple which we did touch on already which is retro mode which as you rightly said I've had a go on this morning uh, I've, I've sort of dipped into everything I could in MLB The Show um, and retro mode instant was an instant win for me um, what, what is it and, and why is it so good? So retro mode is a really popular feature from MLB The Show 17 uh, which returns this year and, and they've kind of expanded upon this year which I'll get to in a second but basically if you've ever played RBI Baseball if you've ever played MVP Baseball the, the EA one of uh, the PS2 years uh, or Triple Play Baseball I guess would be the most famous one from the PS1 days um, it is a throwback to those games where uh, although we touched upon you can already simplify control systems down to one button this is like done in that way, but also with, um, say, 2000 era presentation, maybe even 90 years, 90s era presentation. The music actually reminds me a little bit of Streets of Rage, which, you know, nice. anytime anything reminds me of Streets of Rage is a good thing. Yeah. You've got, it's, it's um, introduced by Cincinnati Reds legend Ken Griffey Jr., um, and he will chime in. So when you play a match, for instance, you generally just get music, but like, um, I, if you smash a home run, Griffey Jr. will chime in with just a man, that's a home run, like, you know, uh, uh, and then just go back to sitting there watching. So it's um, it really does feel feel like yesteryear um it's very simplified batting system you go up you can move your bats your batter around the box uh you press x to hit the ball at the right time uh simplified pitching system so everything is down to the analog stick and the x button so you push the left stick up and x to throw a change up you press the left stick up and sorry down and x to throw a fastball and then this is the really cool bit when the ball is in the air you can add what in in uh in the retro years we would call off the touch so basically you can sort Got of it, yeah. curve the ball as it goes to the air left and right just move, move, by moving the stick left and right and really that is we talked about this being a really nuanced game retro mode they're, they're all the nuances that's it yeah. but it works perfectly because you can you can dip in I mean metro road a match will take you 25 minutes to half an hour and as I say if you want this sort of to bridge the depth of franchise mode off the field with a more simplified uh, version of the gameplay on the field because uh, initially maybe it all feels a bit overwhelming this is the way to do it you can play retro mode in franchise mode now you can bridge those two things together um, and yeah like the the there's so much focus these days you know you reach a point where we've had these sports game series for for MLB The Show 20 years for things like Madden and FIFA 30 years where people actually have come full circle and on the one hand they want the, uh, the the depth and the realism that you see on TV but on the other hand they also look back and think I do miss those modes from like the PS1 years where everything was a bit simpler and this is like a perfect uh, uh, a perfect way of bridging the gap between the two uh, and I think for yourself Dave you know you talked about really wanting to get into this but sort of being unsure where to start I think if you spent a week or two in retro mode then you'd have a perfect like introduction to go into maybe the, the deeper more hardcore elements of the show which do present themselves after uh, after that time I think you're absolutely right it's the best way if you're unsure about baseball to learn the game and then go into the modern version you know the the, the sort of all the, the vast other modes in MLB The Show 18 
Um, well, thank you so much for talking to uh, to me today, Ben, about MOB the show. I mean, you've talked about things I just would have no hope of understanding in a million years if I tried to make this video without you. It's been uh, your your uh, expertise has been incredible. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. You're, you're, you're absolutely what you're welcome back anytime. Um, I'm, there are many other American sports that I'm going to need to speak to you about. Uh, so thank you very much for watching this video. Hopefully that has given you a taste of why MLB The Show 18 is the best sports game that you've never played. And hopefully you now will play it, uh, which I will recommend. Definitely give Retro Mode a go. Uh, please do like this video if you liked it and subscribe so you don't miss anything else from the world of PlayStation. Yeah.